It's been about five months since this coronavirus pandemic started. 765,000 people have lost their lives worldwide. And yet, some people think that this virus is no more dangerous than the flu. This and other myths have persisted almost since day one, and they just won't seem to die no matter how much scientific evidence gets stacked up against it. But in this video, I'm going to try to offer the killing blow. Hello and welcome to Debunk the Funk. I'm Dr. Wilson, your favorite molecular and structural biologist with an afro. Because, let's be honest, you probably don't know any others. There are many COVID-19 myths that just won't seem to die. You've probably heard a lot of them already. Posted on Facebook by your uncle, screeched about in Target by Karens. I found one YouTube video that manages to pack so many of these myths into six minutes, it's like they were trying to get everything wrong. So, let's debunk it. A few months ago, scientists discovered that there was a new virus that was said to be very contagious, very deadly, and without treatment. The experts, or those experts that our governments trusted to be the best, predicted an outbreak with an enormous death toll and a never foreseen burden on hospitals and ICUs. Uh, yeah, it's not even over yet, and it's already the worst pandemic that modern history has seen, and hospitals and healthcare systems all over the world have been put under enormous pressure. So I'd say that's accurate. There was only one thing we could do to prevent the world from ending. Flatten the curve. No credible scientist ever said that this was going to end the world. It's always been about reducing the number of deaths. And so far, there's been a lot. But, plot twist, months later, independent scientists look back and they now see that those predictions were all astronomically wrong. Well, first of all, the pandemic isn't over yet, so those numbers are not final. Second of all, we probably won't get to those numbers because we are taking action to prevent the virus from spreading. If we didn't take any action and the virus was allowed to just spread throughout the population, then those numbers would start to look more accurate. That's kind of why we should listen to scientists when they issue warnings. Deaths have been orders of magnitude lower. They are, in fact, even comparable to other severe flu seasons. Okay, no. No, it is not at all comparable to other flu seasons. Like I've said in my other videos, the number of deaths that the U.S. has seen so far already outnumber the last three flu seasons combined. This video also claims that the case fatality rate for COVID-19 is 0.05 to 0.4%. This is absolutely wrong, and you can do these calculations yourself. But I have seen other people say the exact same wrong thing over and over again. And until recently, I had no idea where people are getting this from. It turns out that this number comes from an actual CDC document, which puts the current infection fatality rate at about 0.6%. Now, infection fatality rate and case fatality rate are not the same thing. Case fatality rate uses hard data to give us a real percentage of how many cases are ending in death. Meanwhile, the infection fatality rate is, quote, not a prediction or estimate of the expected impact of COVID-19. So this infection fatality rate, in the own words of the CDC, is only there to help us plan and prepare for the future. It is not a hard conclusive number. And to be honest, neither is the case fatality rate that you can calculate right now. Those numbers are both going to change as this pandemic moves on. We don't know the real death rate of COVID yet, but we do know that it's killed way more people than the flu does every single year. First things first, the world was not on the brink of an extreme outbreak of a highly deadly and highly contagious disease. Instead, we were already well underway in a pretty normal infection wave of a pretty normal mixture of flu viruses, in which, as every year, coronaviruses were the last of the season. The exponential growth in cases that looked so frightening was nothing more than the direct result of the exponentially growing number of tests performed. No, more tests does not necessarily mean more cases. And I don't understand the point he's trying to make here. If we didn't test, then we wouldn't know that there's a problem and we wouldn't have to worry. Imagine saying this for any other disease. Oh, you have cancer, but because we don't test you for cancer, then you're never going to have to worry about it. Every year when we lab test people with flu-like symptoms, we always find a mix of viruses. Rhinoviruses always come first, then influenza A and B appear, and finally the coronaviruses show up in the game. So, what was different this year? Uh, I thought that was obvious, 
a brand new coronavirus caused a freaking pandemic. Actually, nothing. There seems to be no correlation between lockdown or social distancing and the run of the infection waves. Countries with strict or no measures did comparably well or bad in keeping the spread of the virus low. Also wrong. That graph is cherry-picked, misinformed, and outdated. Brazil certainly is not doing so well with the coronavirus pandemic. Sweden did the worst compared to its fellow Nordic countries that did have lockdowns. And Germany definitely had a lockdown. They literally protested about this just a couple weeks ago. Actually, in most countries, social distancing was imposed well after the true infection wave, or R value, peaked, indicating that lockdowns did not cause the cases to drop. It's like he's praying that nobody fact checks him on this stuff. Almost every single country that went into lockdown did it either late March or early April. Shortly afterwards was when coronavirus peaked and then it declined. Until the US reopened and then everything started increasing again. So tell me again, please, how lockdowns don't work. The outbreak halted in most countries because of the same reason it halts every flu season, every year. Atmospheric circumstances, like the weather, temperature, and humidity. To be fair, this video was uploaded to YouTube in June, which is before the US hit its peak of coronavirus just this past month in July, with 75,000 cases in a single day. So yeah, this idea is already proven wrong. Well, turns out, independent science now shows it's even less contagious than influenza. No, the truth is we don't know exactly how contagious this new coronavirus is, but estimates range from just slightly less contagious than the flu to up to twice as infectious as the flu. It is about as deadly as a bad flu. And there is lots of scientific proof that there is an affordable, reliable, safe, and working medicine that can be taken in the early stages of the illness that will even prevent patients from getting hospitalized. We did not have a cure, and unfortunately, we still don't. I already made a video about how hydroxychloroquine is not a cure for COVID. Go check it out if you have the time. And a quick update to that, some people who think that hydroxychloroquine is a cure pointed to countries like India who have widespread hydroxychloroquine use and appear to be relatively unaffected by coronavirus. But that is not true anymore. So, all of this makes the danger of the coronavirus, or COVID-19, actually comparable to that of a mild to severe flu season. And yes, corona kills, for sure, just like influenza does. But it's not as deadly as illnesses that we have been living with for hundreds and hundreds of years without that much attention of the media. Most of those things are not infectious diseases that can rapidly spread through a population. And so what if heart disease kills more people than COVID? I'm pretty sure we still care about that. Turns out that for, like influenza and other types of viruses, most of us have an innate immunity already, which is, for example, why 75% of the elderly that were exposed on the cruise ship Diamond Princess did not get the virus at all. We all have an innate immune system, but it doesn't offer anybody complete protection against any virus. Those people who didn't get sick on the Diamond Princess probably got lucky, depending on factors like how much virus they were exposed to. This cross immunity, or background immunity, is very well known in science. But whoever cared to tell us about that? Uh, seeing as you just made that up, that's probably why people don't care to tell you about it. It's not a thing in science. That's why we recommend that everybody who can get vaccinations gets vaccinations. Nobody's just innately immune to viruses. It's a really good idea to just inform ourselves. Embrace independent science, embrace discussion, and embrace common sense. We've survived a lot of things already. We can probably handle this one as well. If you actually did any of those things, you would not have said any of the stuff you just said in that video. Well, I think we have another COVID video debunked. Hopefully now we can at least take the myth that COVID-19 is no more dangerous than the flu and socially distance ourselves from it by putting it six feet under the ground. As always, the links to all of my sources are in the description so that you just don't have to take my word for it. You can think for yourself. If you enjoyed this video and found it informative, make sure to give it a like and subscribe so that you know when I upload next. As always, I'm Dr. Wilson, this has been Debunk the Funk, and join me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.